This is part three, sacroiliac and pelvic anatomy review. And this is a review for participants of the Hesh Method, Hesh Method <laughs> Lumbopelvic Workshop. And I'm Jerry Hesh from the Hesh Institute in Henderson, Nevada. Uh, we put on educational seminars, do a little bit of research and writing and presentation. And uh, we have a small amount of clinical care where we treat clients with complex uh, pain syndromes who have uh, been around the block way too many times and have spent way too much of their hard-earned money seeking uh, care. So our, our website is hesinstitute.com and uh, we're very close to Las Vegas, Nevada. So this is a view of the sacrum in terms of proposed axes of motion and uh, This is from an author named Lavignol, and or, or it's in Kapanji. I uh, don't completely recall, but um, the point being that here is one proposed axis, here's another proposed axis, here's another proposed axis somewhere in here, and all three of those are so similar that it becomes academic. This is an example where understanding forward and backward bending of the sacrum is greatly overcomplicated. I promise you that in the clinic you may be able to evaluate joint play in terms of forward bending and backward bending of the sacrum. You cannot discern which axis it is moving about. Now in this view it's showing a glide phenomenon might be a little difficult to see in detail, but that's the point. Uh, the point is that this one is glide, whereas these three show a forward bending, just image a person bending forward to touch her toes, and backward bending axis, just image someone bending backwards. So we don't like to overcomplicate it, and um, it certainly is uh, one movement that is agreed upon by most authors, and in uh, Newman's kinesiology book, um, it actually is the only movement mentioned regarding the, the sacroiliac joint is the forward and backward bending of the sacrum. And I appreciate the other terminologies, nutation and counter nutation, but it becomes just a little bit complex. People have to stop and think, wait, what does that mean? Which way does it go? And um, I think that forward bending uh, is very lucid, that we're very readily able to uh, visualize what that means. Another view of ligaments and the point that we're trying to make here is that the largest nerve root is L5, which is in the smallest neural foramina in the spine, and anything that alters sacral position within the SI joint and as it relates to L5, or the reverse, has the potential for altering the dimensions of that structure slightly. And in a normal person, it's not going to matter. They have enough compliance. But when you have someone who has osteophytes and some disc degeneration, um, some excessive uh, disc bulging or herniation or etc., um, you know, greater pathologies can lessen those dimensions where mechanical input can create a tipping point. Just uh, something to be mindful of. Sometimes we help our clients and you look at a, an MRI before when they were in profound pain and you look at an MRI when they're out of pain and you can't measure small, small movements but the client can feel much better in response to um, our input and we may not have a lucid explanation um, but here are some uh, theoretical constructs. So we also have to look at the transverse plane, and uh, this seems to be the plane of motion that sometimes gets ignored in our profession. I think of the mechanics of the foot and ankle, and um, it doesn't get as much press, such as in the subtalar joint, where varus and valgus, or inverse and eversion, uh, are readily measured much more difficult to specifically isolate and measure the transverse plane of rotation, yet they are functionally linked and very important, and the same is true at the pelvis. Here's a top view of the uh, entire pelvis in the 
transverse plane. It's useful to know that the front of the SI joint is wider. The front of the sacrum is wider than the back of the sacrum. This shows the SI joint right here. That is the joint space. This is the anterior SI ligament and capsule. This large ligament here is the interosseous ligament. Very wide ligament, very, very stout. And then this back here is the posterior ligaments that we can put our fingers on. Some of them, of course, we can't. They're deep, the short ones. Um, and then, of course, you'd be full of muscle here, the, uh, the rectus spinae and multifidi. Note again the angulation here that the articular and the retroarticular space make such that the front of the joint space is wider than the back of the joint space and wider than the retroarticular space as well. At different levels of the SI joint there are different angulations. Again this just reinforces that the joint is made for stability not just in one plane but in all three planes. And this talks about the joint of the facet of the sacrum that articulates with L5. And this is a study from 1957 by an author named Solonen. And this study was re reproduced somewhere in the 80s, uh, late 80s, early 90s. And that was in Spine Journal and basically came up with uh, fairly similar numbers in which, in which significant asymmetry from side to side happens in about 30%. So in this individual, he has a very strong, stable, curvy uh, facet on one side, and on the opposite, it's more planar, okay? We'll talk more about the lumbosacral motion coupling, and uh, this image will come to mind. So the SI joint is basically a synovial joint. This is according to Bowen and Cassidy, who did a brilliant study in 81, landmark article, and... Um, it has five of six synovial characteristics, a joint cavity with synovial fluid, a capsule with an outer fibrous inner synovial membrane. Both surfaces have cartilage. It has ligamentous connections and it has diff definite motion. The one characteristic that makes it not a true, a complete synovial joint is the fact that the sacrum has hyaline cartilage, whereas the ilium has fibrocartilage. The innervation of the SI joint, SI ligaments, the proximal musculature, uh, joint capsule, etc., is very expansive. It goes from L2, L3, L4, L5, S1, and S2. I would conceive that a little bit of contribution from S3 at the uh, posterior, inferior joint capsule ligaments. And um, the innervation is uh, very complex. Uh, there's a current trend of doing injections inside the SI joint and it correlates well with some so-called sacroiliac joint provocation tests which are also hip pain provocation tests and there are some additional studies that counter the perception that that is a gold standard test. Um, the injection and so lots of controversial uh, statements going back and forth on that but some very good studies that show that injections in the dorsal ligaments a blind injection is actually superior to a injection into the joint um, that literature uh, almost gets uh, hidden away on some of the sites that are promoting the sacroiliac joint dysfunction treatment paradigm I'll defer that to later on the joint uh, consists of joint mechanoreceptors type 1, 3, and 4. And um, the innervation of the, of the uh, ligaments primarily is with noisoceptors, although they take a large amount of force to get them to fire. So it's not a delicate thing like the tip of our finger is. It's designed to take a tremendous amount of force every time we sit, walk, stand, there's a large amount of force that goes through that joint. So the noisoceptors can't be firing every little nuance of force that traverses it. Um, it does take a high amount of force to get them to fire. Now, the uh, workbook covers these ligaments, and during the uh, workshop we talk about the type 1, 2, 3, and 4 um, joint receptors. And uh, 
we prefer treatment that is directed at affecting the type 3 receptors. And the innervation certainly is very complex. You can have pain referring from the SI region referring superiorly and inferiorly. You can have referred pain to the area of the PSIS from all lumbar segments and upper sacral segments and up as high as T12. Uh, called thoracolumbar syndrome. Dr. Main did a nice study. That's M-A-I-G-N-E. And uh, pain can refer to the SI from as low as the hip joint. Large muscles span that region. Large muscles connect that region to other distal sites, such as the quadratus uh, muscle that connects ribs to the ilium, and the latissimus dorsi, which connects the pelvis to the shoulder, gluteus maximus, uh, rectus spinae multifidi. We talked about the hip rotators previously. Large, massive, multidirectional abdominal muscles. Actually, this is so almost one unit because uh, you know you can't parse it out as single segmented muscles. They work in synchrony and have many interdigitations that connect them. And um, muscles work together, not singularly. And um, the view here of the quadratus lumborum shows just multiple multiple different angulations of the fiber these are arrows here arrows here arrows here multiple directions it, we should probably color that graphic for you but remarkably complex muscle and you can't get your hands on all part of it but you can evaluate some of the function by looking at other movements such as lateral glide of the pelvis uh, inferior glide of the pelvis superior glide of the pelvis, uh, superior inferior glide of the ribs, side bending of the lumbar sp spine, rotation of the lumbar spine, etc. We saw this picture earlier, we'll bypass it right now, and uh, that summarizes my presentation on anatomy. There certainly is much more that could be gone into. There are many, many good sources on anatomy of the SIJ and a very recent journal uh, article with some letters to the editor that followed it can be found in Journal of Anatomy. Numerous sources on uh, taking a very in-depth uh, study on the anatomy of the SIJ. There are several books such as the books that uh, were the Congress proceedings from the last eight World Congresses on Low Back Pain and its relation to the SIJ or relationship to the pelvis and also the, the two books that have come out as a result of that conference and uh, many textbooks. Contact me if you have any uh, any inquiries regarding them. I have a, a shelf that uh, has many of those resources, And uh, but for our purposes here we just wanted to briefly introduce the uh, subject matter and uh, move into the clinical manual therapy evaluation and treatment. So we will stop here. Thank you very much.